Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Gitasha Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 24th of February. Family of Indian man killed in U.S. Kansas demands proper probe into the incident. Pakistan should stop blaming others and focus on fighting terrorism, says Afghan official. And Hindus across India mark Mahashivratri festival. And now for all the details. Ahead of the fifth phase of voting in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province's assembly elections, political parties on Friday campaigned in full swing. The fifth of seven phases of voting will take place on February 27th. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday addressed a rally in Gonda city of northern Uttar Pradesh province as he campaigned for his Bhartiya Janata Party, implying that people had backed the demonetization move which he said was a surgical strike on black money. He also took a jibe at opposition parties for condemning the move. <laughs> झूठ फैलाने के लिए जी जान से जुटी हुई है उनको देश की चिंता कम है देश की इकोनॉमी की आर्थिक स्थिति की चिंता कम है नोटबंदी होने से क्या हुआ क्या नहीं हुआ उसकी चिंता कम है Meanwhile, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav also held a rally in Akabarpur city of the province. Akhilesh endorsed his Samajwadi Party symbol cycle, announced voters to re-elect his party to power. As a sadhan hai na, jahan aap BJP se sadhan rahoge, bhai hati wali party se bhi sadhan hai na. Ye cycle to aapki kahi bhi khadi ho jayegi, jahan chaoge wahan khadi kar loge. और हाथी अगर बिगड़ गया और हाथी ले आए तब क्या होगा वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ ग्रैंड ओल्ड कांग्रेस पार्टी राहुल गांधी आल्सो अड्रेस्ड अ रैली इन बस्ती टाउन इंडोसिंग हिज पार्टीज एजेंडा टू लियो वोटर्स स्ट्रेटजिकली अ की प्रोविंस उत्तर प्रदेश इज ट्रीटेड एज अ बेल वेदर फॉर द जनरल इलेक्शन दैट इज 2 इयर्स अवे Moving on, as Islamabad blames Afghanistan for the series of terror attacks that took place in Pakistan last week, Afghan authorities have denied the allegations saying that war-torn country has been one of the worst victims of terror attacks. When Pakistan was ripped by a wave of terror attacks last week, Islamabad pointed fingers at Afghanistan for giving safe havens to terrorists. Pakistan alleged that the terror attacks were plotted by terrorists from the Afghan soil. In a rebuttal to these allegations, Afghan ambassador to India Shahida Mohammad Abdali said that Pakistan should stop the blame game and instead work on fighting terrorism. Uh, rather than blaming Afghanistan or any other country, it's best to focus on fighting terrorism the way it is required. which is not to distinguish between terrorists which is not to use terrorism as a to, as a tool for political gains it is not to have a double standard of all sides when it when it comes to fighting terrorism because we believe it is a fight for all abdali also added that his country has suffered heavy destruction due to terrorism and therefore it was out of question that afghanistan would be training terrorists Both Afghanistan and Pakistan have a history of counter-accusing one another for terror attacks in their respective territory. Our security and future prosperity. An Indian engineer was shot dead in the United States Kansas province in an alleged racial attack. His family in India struggles to come to terms with the loss. Family of 32-year-old Srinivas Kuchhi Botla. who was shot at in an american bar in the province of kansas on friday said that the indian government should look into the incident 
A Kansas man, Adam Purinton, was charged on Thursday with shooting to death Kuchi Botla and wounding another Indian man, Alok Madasani, and an American in a bar on Wednesday evening. The federal authorities are investigating the incident as a possible hate crime. Government should voice out this strongly because our brothers, sisters and our relatives and, uh, are there. And if you really look into this incident, this is not uh, done by a, a teenager or a burglar or something like that, a drug addict. It is, a, it is done by a 55-year-old man. Kuchi Botla's killing led news bulletins in India and drew strong reactions on social media. People have voiced concern that U.S. President Donald Trump's America First position on immigration and jobs has fueled a climate of intolerance. Meanwhile, India's Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj has assured that India would undertake all arrangements to transport Kuchi Botla's mortal remains to his hometown Hyderabad. Moving on to news from Nepal, almost three months after Constitution Amendment Bill was registered at the Parliament Secretariat and over a month after it was tabled in Parliament, deliberations finally took place on Thursday. After Nepal's former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's Communist Party of Nepal unified Marxist-Leninist's decision to stay neutral, deliberations on the Constitution Amendment Bill finally started on Thursday. The move was made following Oli's meeting with Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Speaker Onsari Gharti. In the UML-led nine parties opposition bloc, only Nepal Majdur Kisan Party objected to the proposal and demanded that the Constitution Amendment Bill be withdrawn. The Hulse government is under pressure from the Madhese-based parties to amend the Constitution. And after government's decision to hold local-level elections on May 14, the Madhese-based parties have launched protests demanding amends in Constitution before polls. With the House endorsing the proposal to consider discussions on the Constitution of Nepal, lawmakers have 72 hours to register their amendments. The next House meeting has been scheduled for March 2nd. India has approved 16 road projects in Nepal to be undertaken through its financial assistance to the Himalayan country. The decision was taken during the fifth bilateral line of credit review meeting between the two governments. Under the third line of credit to Nepal, India has approved 16 road projects. The Indian Embassy in Kathmandu said that the projects need to be consolidated in order to attract quality contractors. Both sides agreed to set up joint monitoring teams to meet on a quarterly basis to ensure better monitoring and speedy implementation of the projects. They also discussed the modalities for the implementation of the line of credit for $750 million pledged by India for post-earthquake reconstruction in Nepal, which is now ready for operation, the embassy said. Devotees across India performed rituals to mark the festival dedicated to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva. The festival has been accorded a lot of significance in Hindu mythology. Devotees across India lined up outside heavily decorated temples since early morning to offer prayers on Friday. Mahashivratri is the most important festival for millions of devotees of Lord Shiva. The day marks Lord Shiva's marriage to his consort goddess Parvati. Milk, water, bilva leaves and fruits are offered to the Shivlingam, a representative symbol of God of Destruction. Devotees also observe rigorous fast on this day. The Shiv Lingam, usually made of stone, is also worshipped throughout the night by washing it frequently with milk and honey or rose water while chanting hymns. In northern Uttar Pradesh province, devotees flocked to the banks of river Ganges for a holy bath on the auspicious day. भगवान शंकर की प्रसन्नता के लिए इनका एक विशिष्ट त्योहार है सभी लोग मना रहे हैं इसलिए आज संगम में लोग आज स्नान करने आए हैं 
India's renowned Sand artist Sudarshan Patnayak also created an elaborate sculpture depicting Lord Shiva on the beach in Eastern Puri city on Thursday. Folk music mesmerized audience in India's northeastern city of Guwahati. Traditional musical instruments established the cultural glory of the region. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Family of Indian man killed in US Kansas demands proper probe into the incident. Pakistan should stop blaming others and focus on fighting terrorism, says Afghan official. And Hindus across India mark Mahashivratri festival. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.